Fair to say that if the end back. game is a free float, it is internationalization of the yuan, it is liberalization of the currency, this is a pretty massive backward step. Yeah, it is. I guess the interesting question is why do they feel the need to do this now? I mean, what we've seen in the markets is the PBOC trying to nudge the market into a lower dollar China spot level uh, for probably the last uh, six weeks or so. And finally, it seems to have gotten uh, very frustrated and just basically is imposing its will uh, through this new fixing mechanism. Does it seem, you know, it seems to suggest that this seems a little bit of overkill given that we have had more or less stability when it comes to uh, dollar yuan and maybe a little bit less stability when it comes to the basket against the yuan. But is this really necessary and does it really, you know, I guess set back this whole process of, of opening up? Well, if the concern was volatility, it wasn't necessary. I mean, if you actually look at the intraday ranges of dollar CNY, uh, again, over the last six weeks, some days it's been extremely narrow. You know, we've traded, you know, within a 40 pip range just for the whole day. So, you know, I, I don't really buy the argument that this is to uh, combat volatility because there hasn't been any. Uh, it's more likely that someone uh, very senior just said to PBOC, look, uh, do something about volatility. Uh, before the party congress and this is what they've come up with. So, <laughs> Cliff, essentially what you're saying that when it comes to policy making in China, you still get these sort of politically driven knee-jerk reactions that result in policy changes. Yeah, I mean, we've actually looked at this uh, in some detail since, uh, you know, since the news leaked uh, late last week. I mean, it, it, um, as far as we can tell, and of course, you know, we don't have exact details, uh, but the PBOC is injecting itself into the daily fixing via three mechanisms. I don't want to get too technical here, but basically they'll have an, what's what we call an asymmetric reaction. Uh, depending on whether the currency either strengthened or weakened against its uh, reference baskets, uh, you know, the PBOC is telling banks to, you know, lean against the wind. Now, in a, in a basket policy, for example, the kind that Singapore runs, uh, there's no need to lean against the wind. The mechanism is pretty, pretty mechanical from day to day, but that's not going to be the case from this point going forward. So if, in fact, this adjustment, this counter-cyclical adjustment factor, you know, is, does make the currency less market-oriented, does it do either one of two things? Does it weigh in negatively when we're going into the MSCI decision uh, in just a few weeks' time? And does it or could it potentially jeopardise its position in the IMF basket? Uh, in principle, it should uh, jeopardise its position in the IMF basket. Uh, I think it's going to be harder for people using the renminbi to figure out exactly how to hedge the currency and any aid uh, or uh, programs that it might receive from the IMF, but it won't affect it because that decision is, is not a market decision, it's a political decision. It's a political decision that the IMF's made, uh, that this is part of the way of getting China to play uh, by international rules and it's not going to um, you know, go back on its own strategy. This is not clearly the year for big reforms. We've seen them kind of try to, you know, push forward the deleveraging campaign and we had some market volatility, uh, you know, across uh, equities and also bonds, but they've since kind of pulled back a little bit. Is it just going to be steady as she goes until we get that party congress? Uh, we've seen some promising signs in the way that they're trying to get the credit system to deleverage a bit, uh, but it's, uh, it's not enough. Uh, you know, and we'll have to see if they can stay the course in terms of those reforms. Otherwise, I think uh, reforms are, other, other reforms are very much on hold right now. Uh, Cliff, I want to just throw up this quick ch uh, terminal chart, 431, uh, talking about the debt to GDP ratio. You know, by some estimates, it's at what, like 260, 270 percent of GDP. The Moody's downgrade last week, did that surprise you? Uh, no, I think it was kind of late, actually. I mean, Moody's put uh, China on, on negative watch in March of 2016, and basically it looks like it spent, you know, more than a year trying to debate this internally. Uh, normally what happens uh, with ratings, normally what happens with ratings is that the ratings tend to, uh, the rating changes, rather, tend to occur after market prices have already moved, and I think that's probably uh, true to some extent. 
Uh, what Moody's is saying, you know, is that uh, they are, you know, regardless of the macro signs right now, uh, that they are alarmed. I mean, if you don't allow me to just get a little more technical again, I mean, uh, the other thing that we're hearing about this new fixing mechanism in China is that part of the input now is what PBOC itself thinks about the macro economy. So if the markets think that the economy is, you know, not doing as well as it could, but PBOC thinks it's going great, uh, the currency is not going to be allowed to show what the markets thinks.